This is Confidence's engine. And in this video, we're gonna talk about what you need to know to service it. Now I don't really know very much about cars. I tend to just get in, turn the key and uh, drive off. There's always a choice of local garages for the servicing. And if things do go wrong, you pull into a lay-by and uh, you open this lid thingy and then stare into whatever this is and ring your roadside assistance. But it's really not the same for boats. There are no lay-bys at sea. It's the responsibility of every small boat skipper to have a rudimentary understanding of how their engine works and how to maintain it so that if anything goes wrong they can quickly fault find and hopefully rectify the fault reducing risk to the boat and your crew. And by far and away the best way to gain that understanding is to learn how to service it yourself and in the process you'll also save yourself a few quid not employing professionals. Now I spread the various tasks out for Tuesdays when it's raining to do, uh, to do part of it. And obviously the other thing is, is that the more I do it, the quicker I get at it. All internal combustion engines need to mix air and fuel in order to fire. The very process of firing generates significant amounts of heat, so an effective method of cooling is required. And of course, the moving parts of the engine must be well lubricated to reduce wear and maintain efficiency throughout the engine's lifetime. Any kind of debris that gets inside an engine can cause a catastrophic failure. So your air, your fuel and your cooling water all need to be kept clean and you do it using filters. And these need to be replaced every so often to ensure they don't get clogged up and become ineffective. The fuel and air pass through the cylinder and out of the exhaust, but the engine oil and the cooling water stay inside the engine, so after a while they need changing out as well. Ultimately, the maintenance regime on a small boat engine involves little more than changing filters and removing and replacing liquids. Switch out a couple of other serviceable parts as well and you'll keep the heart of your boat beating and it'll get you home safely each and every time you go out. Aboard Confidence, we have a three-cylinder, naturally aspirated marine diesel engine and this is typical of most auxiliary engines on yachts and small displacement powerboats. Our engine is a Volvo Penta D130 but all boat engines that I've worked on follow the same basic principles. It's just the parts that are very specific to each engine. The upshot of this is, if you can change an oil filter on one engine, you should be able to work out how to change an oil filter on any engine. And if you need advice on a specific make or model of engine, a YouTube search will almost always yield a zillion results, many of them very high quality. So, what tasks do you need to learn? You'll need to be able to remove the old oil and oil filter, refill with new clean oil and fit a new filter. We have a video on doing that for this engine, link in the description below. You'll also need to be able to change the fuel filter and the pre-filter, refit new ones and bleed the air out of the system. Again, video in the description below. You need to be able to clean the strainer on the seawater cooling system and replace the pump impeller. You need to be able to drain the coolant, replace the thermostat flush the water system and refill with fresh antifreeze. And you need to know how to change the air filter and drive belts. Again, all those tasks, we've already made videos on how we do this on our engine. Now, whilst watching YouTube uh, can teach you a great deal, there's nothing like face-to-face -face training. And the Royal Yachting Association, if you live in an area where you can get to a sea school, uh, RYA do a one-day diesel maintenance course. And it's really great because the students can get practical experience actually touching a test engine. Usually it's on a test bench rather than squeezed into a little engine space. So it's quite a good way of learning the basics. So how often should you carry out these tasks? Of course, this varies from engine to engine and also on how much you use your engine. The manufacturer's handbook will give you the guidelines for your specific make and model, but many of them are very similar. The recommended service intervals for our engine are as follows. Before starting each day, you should be checking the engine space, checking for leaks under the engine and looking for signs of smoke or heat damage anywhere around the engine. Obviously, you also need to check you have oil and coolant in the engine before you start it. Once you have started it, you should check you're happy that you've got cooling water coming out of the exhaust. But don't forget to look for signs of smoke from your exhaust as well. 
On start-up from cold, a puff or two of whitish smoke is to be expected, and the longer the engine has been left standing idle, the more smoke you should expect to see. That should disappear once the engine's properly warmed up, though. So if it doesn't, or if there's a strong smell of fuel, it could be a warning of a variety of more serious problems. So get professional advice. Dark grey, or a kind of bluey smoke, um, foretell of your engine burning its lubricating oil. And that's not normally a good thing, so if that's happening, um, speak to your professionals. Black smoke can foretell of a myriad of, uh, of serious conditions, but also uh, on a older or uh, well-worked engine, especially if you're revving up, um, it's kind of to be expected. So uh, keep an eye on If you've got clouds of the stuff, then obviously that's bad. Uh, but if it's a little bit, then keep an eye on it, check your RPM, make a note in the log and see if there's any changes. Um, and if, obviously, if you get worried, then um, seek help. The last thing I do before leaving the dock is to put the boat in gear in both forward and then reverse to make sure I've got control of the boat before we remove any lines. I also turn the wheel from lock to lock and watch the water flow. Again, just checking the steering is working before we get underway. When you're on a long passage, you do need to check the engine. So it's just a quick lift up and have a look around the engine. That all seems reasonable, so we carry on. Now, there's some other checks that don't need necessarily doing daily, but do need doing periodically. And one is you checking your water strainer. Dip your gearbox or sail drive oil level. And then, of course, there's making sure your fan belts are still got good tension. The more time you spend looking at this engine, the more uh, opportunity you'll have for noticing changes, especially if you keep everything clean and then uh, you'll spot a new leak or a change really easily with a clean engine. So that's the regular checks done. What about the servicing tasks? According to the owner's manual for our engine, there are some tasks which need to be carried out at least once a year or every 200 hours of operation. The first task is changing the engine oil and oil filter. Then there's the fuel filter and pre-filter change. It's worth noting I regularly use a diesel additive when fueling up. With modern biodiesel, the likelihood of an outbreak of diesel bug growing inside your tank has increased, especially when fuel stands in its tanks for long periods. If your engine can't get fuel, you're not going to get it started, and getting rid of a diesel bug outbreak can be a devil of a job. Another annual task is the seawater pump impeller change. I tend to check the impeller a couple of times in a season, although I'll only change it early if there's any signs of wear. Otherwise, I just stick to a new one every year. Confidence has a sail drive, and just like more traditional gearboxes, a sail drive needs its oil changed annually. We normally get lifted once a year for anti-fouling and swapping out the anodes, so we tend to change the sail drive oil when she's out of the water. For each of these annual service tasks, I rarely do it all in one hit. I tend to wait until we get stuck in a port with miserable weather and do one task at a time, spreading the workload throughout the season. Anything left at the end of the year gets done over the winter months. I always keep stock of spares on board, and that way I not only have parts ready for any impromptu service task, I also have spares in case of an emergency. Finally then, there are the tasks that are recommended at every 500 hours, or at least every two years. That's an air filter replacement, engine coolant flush and replace, and the drive belt replace. If you keep on top of these tasks, you should have a fairly trouble-free existence. But every now and again, even the best maintained engine will throw you a curveball. And if you're lucky, it'll happen at the dockside. But if you're not, what do you do if you break down at sea? First thing is don't panic. And then get on your VHF and let the Coast Guard know what your situation is. Are you drifting into a shipping lane? Are you, uh, uh, are you, are you able to anchor? Um, are you able to sail home? What's your situation? How dangerous is it? Is there a risk to life? Once that's done, you can get your head in the engine and work out what the problem is. If the engine's overheated, the alarm's gone off, then check your cooling water's flowing, check for a coolant leaks, make sure you've got coolant in the header. If there's no coolant water flowing out of the side, check that your, hot, that your seawater strainer uh, isn't blocked. Could be as simple as weed in the seawater that's just been extracted, dragged up as you've been running, and uh, it's blocked the seawater and the engine's overheated. Unblock it, chuck it down the, chuck it over the side, and uh, she'll start again and, and she'll be fine.
if the engine stopped, it's quite likely to be related to fuel. So uh, check that you haven't got a fuel leak. And um, have you been through any rough weather recently? Has that stirred up any dirt in the tank? And if it has, um, then maybe change your filters, bleed the air out, and hopefully she'll start again. Of course, if she doesn't start again, then you can contact the Coast Guard and they can send help. Now, I said there were no laybys at sea, but if you're comfortably at anchor and you're not in any real danger, there are some services in some parts of the UK that can help. We've been customers of Sea Start now for a number of years, and in that time, I've had to call them out four times for faults I couldn't fix myself. Once we were in the marina and I couldn't get started because of the engine control unit failing. The other times we were able to get to a safe place, either at anchor or tied up to a pontoon. And on two of these occasions we couldn't get fixed on the water, so had to be towed home. Once in our previous boat when the fuel pump failed, and most recently in confidence when we had a starter motor failure. Of course, viewers to our channel may remember our butties and breakdowns video when our raw water pump failed outside Weymouth Harbour. On that occasion we were able to safely sail into Portland Harbour anchor up and get a temporary fix done without needing help, but we had contacted Seastar in anticipation of a tow back to safety. So there it is, small boat maintenance in a nutshell. I hope you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe and thanks for watching.